Hi, you guys. How are you? Hola, señoritas. Hola, hombre. Hola. Yeah. <laughs> Adam and Sharon have the best greetings for life. Ow. I always oh. hang back at the beginning to see what you two will both do. You'll never know, you know? It's I don't think we even know. Time. Two no. seconds before, I have no idea what I'm going to say. <laughs> and I just follow his lead, so we're good to go. <laughs> hey, you guys. Thank you for checking in with 90s Now. Adam and Kel, great to see you as usual. Hi, Sharon. Hi. Uh, this is wildly off topic. Not Well, you know what? It's part of the now. Have you tried uh, the uh, Blue Diamond Bold Spicy Dill Almonds? No. Can and you it, get me some? Have we discussed those? Have we discussed those? Is that the big bag you're talking about? Yeah. Where do you get those? Is that at Jean Costco? Costco. Costco. Really? Yeah. 17 bucks. <laughs> Are, so they're in like the nut aisle with all the other. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. might be going tomorrow, so I'll give it a go. Do Can it. you take a Super picture good. of the bag, Sharon, for me Surely. as we talk yeah. to our entire listeners? <laughs> tell them this. And if Blue Diamond is listening, think about us for an endorsement. Yeah. yeah. Ding. Wait, which, which kind is it? Is it the cayenne pepper? Like, no, it's a, a spicy, bold, bold, spicy dill bold bold spicy. and it is bold i'm googling it as we speak oh yeah like it's compelling enough where you're like oh, i'm gonna have a few i'm gonna have a few have a few then you uh have like uh, no taste buds left yeah and a sore stomach it's so satisfying <laughs> though mm. you really do have to exercise some restraint <laughs> but very you know, delicious you know who doesn't have any restraint who's that my better yeah. half. oh your better half for anything right <laughs> yeah, she, she, no restraint and it's funny because like have you seen um in the store now they have these uh like and maybe they've been there for a while but we just it's been maybe two months we're onto these like rice crispy treats you can also buy them at costco and like so that's like original format but if you buy them at walmart they have birthday cake flavor of rice oh crispy Ooh. but better, like um elaine loves those ones those are her jam my favorite one is the rainbow rice krispies where they have little nougats of chocolate in rainbow colors. Mm. And, and it's only like 90 calories, right? Like it's no big deal. And they're delicious. It's no big deal. And I'm having seven. It's no big deal. Yeah. Well, Elaine had four, <laughs> Elaine had four the other night. <clears throat> Excuse me. Back to uh, back. And then she wow. goes, there's a pile of like wrappers on her friend in front. She goes, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> the evidence. <laughs> uh, well, now I'm starving. Thank you very much. I'm well, sorry. We'll yep. get you to your groceries in no time, Adam. This show <laughs> always flies by because we're always having fun. That's why. So what we're going to tell you about today is how one woman helped her current husband marry his first wife. <laughs> okay. And some other stories about that. Uh, also, how J-Lo dealt with being snubbed by the Oscars and how Justin Timberlake has got a few more bucks in the bank. Just a few. Um, Kelly's trivia and a 90s rewind to make sure that you are fully ensconced in your 90s-ness. What's that word you just used? Ensconced. I have never heard that word before. You're welcome. <laughs> I love that you're sing-songing the lesson today, Sharon. <laughs> yes. Uh, ensconced. Uh, what does that mean? Like uh, enveloped, uh, Fully in, Adam. Fully in. in. Yeah. That I understand. Sense. There you go. Not to be uh, confused with wall sconces. True. I once did a whole bit on that on the radio <laughs> where I had a lady, I think she emailed me at the time and she said that her husband like wasn't putting up the wall sconces that like she'd been asking for for two months. So I asked her to give me his number and I called him like on the oh, air. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and we actually had like, I think it was like a week worth of like, not every day, but like every second day we had an update to see if it got done and it finally got done. And it was such great content. The listeners were having a, like a hoot, like finding out if Adrian, and this is like from like 10 years ago, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> put up the wall sconces. <laughs> so. Isn't that funny? Sconces are like one of those terms that doesn't sound necessarily um, now uh, or 90s, but maybe 1890s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's window count. dressing. Yeah. <laughs> we are full service here at 90s now. Um, and you know what? The mission that Tom Cruise chose to accept was getting people into the theater to see a sequel to a movie uh, released 36 years ago. <laughs> and, and guess what? Big mission accomplished. 
So let's start there. Mm. The success of Top Gun Maverick proved, I think that, you know, people really did want an update from that movie 36 years later. Uh, huge box office draw, but I think also one small part, if not large part, was people were really psyched to get back into theaters and just out of the house, period. Mm. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you say? <laughs> but this this movie did that though. This movie, I think, like even me who was like not rushing at all to go back to the theaters, I actually really want to see this one in the theater. Yeah, same here. Because of the sound. Yeah. Was, that was a whole big... Yeah. Totally. Did you did you see it, Adam? Yet? I feel like weren't you going? I, I haven't. I was supposed to go with friends tonight, but it got canceled or postponed. But uh, my okay. best friend saw it, and he he has and everything he has to say about the movie is amazing. Okay. Wow. Well, it looks really cool. It's neat that the whole gang got back together, the ones yeah. that survived the first movie. <laughs> and you know what's interesting is I realize a lot of people have, you know, things to say about Tom Cruise and he's warranted some of those conversations, I suppose, over the the past, like couch jumping anyone. But um, yeah. uh, you can't deny that he is a passionate filmmaker Yeah, and he will do whatever it takes to get the shot. Yeah. Including like, I think breaking his own ankle. Didn't he do that on Mission Impossible once? Like, I think so. Pretty sure. I'm sure that's not the only thing he's broken of his own body parts <laughs> to make the, get the shot. Like you said, you know, like he's that yeah. committed. Yeah. It would have been like bittersweet had he done that couch jumping on Oprah that time and also hurt himself. That would have yeah. been like, <laughs> that would have been like uh, how about you learn your lesson and don't jump up on things. <laughs> but Oprah would have been like, oh no, Tommy. And like Rosie O'Donnell would have lost her mind if he broke an ankle. <laughs> oh my gosh. I wonder how Rosie feels about Tom Cruise these days. She was all in. Oh, I and- love that. That was such a cool part of her show where like, she was just so authentic, like how much she loved him. My Tommy, like, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 It was super cute. It was good. It was, I think she was like one of the, fr- I mean, she paved the way for Ellen. There's no question. Oh Yeah. And every, you know, everybody else. And just, she was so authentic. And remember when she used to throw those things, those koosh balls into the audience? Yeah. Everything she did was like, here's something else. That's cool. We got to get a koosh ball flinger. Yeah. And then she, remember she had the frankly counter. Do you remember that? The what? So for, because people started to notice that frankly was her crutch word, right? Like that was her word. So for a while, I think it was Listerine or scope. I think it was scope. That's Every time sponsored. she would say, frankly, during the show, they had a counter in the bottom and it would count and, they, and like Scope would give like however much money because she'd said, frankly, <laughs> that's funny. That's it was a really great cool. idea. I forgot about that. Yeah. And I'm, and her, her musical director, John, just like, he was such a good fit for her. Yeah. Like he was, it was just such a great, like I'm, I was sad. It was only on for four years. I love that show. I'm, I'm blanking a bit. Did uh, Rosie come out on her show or was it after the show was done? I think fully after, but she remembered Ellen came on because Ellen had come out in 97, right? Yep. And Rosie's show ran from 96 to 2000 or 2001, something like that. Yeah. And I remember um, Ellen came on, I think after all, uh, it was obviously after all the coming out. And then so there, were, there was some sort of clip where Rosie said something like, well, maybe I'm lesbian too. And they were trying to joke about like Lebanese versus Leb- Leb- like lesbian, something like that. There was some kind of joke. And then Rosie said, well, maybe I'm Lesbanese too, or something oh, like that. And it was a yeah. clear, it wasn't like, but it was like, okay, you know, like here we are. Yeah. So Kids today, hey? isn't it crazy that like now it would just not really, I mean, it, it's still a deal to come out publicly, but, oh yeah, but it's not what it was in Certainly 97. Not. No, exactly. Mm-hmm. Thankfully at least that's changed, you know, what people have the confidence to sort of persist with their truth. Mm -hmm. No, you know, no matter what anybody says. So progress is good. Yeah. Um, now back to Tommy and working hard. Like, I think that Tom Cruise was ready physically for the making of this movie. Uh, but it was, uh, pretty intense training for the cast too, which, uh, (laughs) which I think might've been a bit more difficult on them, but he was saying, that uh, in making movies, you're constantly learning. You have to constantly work to become more and more competent in many different fields. Um, so he says, you've got to work. It's not a bunch of parties and doing that. And that's what I love. I work. don't think everybody, I mean, th- I think there's a, um, a perception for some elements of Hollywood where it's always glitz and glam. And I think there are people that that's what they focus on is being more famous than their art. 
but Tom yeah. is not, Tom is not that, you know, and there's many other actors that are not that, that it comes, you know, I think they have to play the game to get, you know, the box office numbers and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. But like for Tom, he just, he clearly loves making movies. Like he clearly loves yeah. it. Yeah. And there's many other actors, obviously that feel the same, like Forrest Whitaker, you know, like um, Tyler Perry, like all these people love making movies. Interesting that you would pick Forrest Whitaker. Is he not also a Scientologist? Is he? Forrest Whitaker? Do you hear my voice? <laughs> I do. <laughs> That's funny. Is, he can't be, really? Well, why not? I just feel like I would have heard about that before. You're like, I don't, better I don't, here. I don't think I've ever heard his name and that. Let's check. Well, I really don't think Tyler Perry's a Scientologist. On a 2018 article from popculture.com uh it says patrick swayze and forrest whitaker are among many of the hollywood elites turns to scientology uh recruits by travolta mm -hmm. good for you sharon i had no clue zero zero clues you know what we're better off not knowing scientology in my opinion is uh is uh cuckoo and i think to tom cruise's credit however high up in the rankings he is within that religion uh we haven't heard a lot about that in the past few years. Oh my God. He's going, he's gone radio silent on that. Which he always did. He never talked about it. Never. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, no one was else, no one else was allowed to ask him about it either. So we talk about it here. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of podcast we have. That's how we roll. <laughs> or we carry on, move on and do uh, something more fun like uh, trivia. Yes, please. <laughs> 90s. <laughs> yeah. T -t 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 Trivia. Bing bong. Bing bong. You ready? Uh, born ready. <laughs> okay. We're going back to the news and politics funky blue color. Ooh. Uh -oh. I like us to pretend that we're smart. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, I'll, although Adam did, because he's learned all the schooling from the 90s. Right, Adam? <laughs> they didn't teach had... me anything about the 90s <laughs> when I was in school in the 80s. <laughs> I almost had two questions right last week. You almost did. Didn't Sharon beat you to the punch on one of them? Yeah. Yes, she, yes, yeah, she did. Shaquille O'Neal. That was it. Um, by the way, Shaquille O'Neal's ex, Shawnee, got married last weekend. Wow. Um, in like Anguilla or something. And I think oh, wow. I did like I I I'm saying it with confidence, even though I'm not exactly sure. I think he actually said in a recent interview, Shaquille that he has like nothing but respect for her. And like, he didn't, I don't think he rose to the level of, of where she rose to the level during their marriage, hmm. you know? And he, cause I think she's the mom of like all of his kids. So he has How nothing but respect all? for her. And I think they're, I think they're good. Like, I think they're good. You know, like it's been a while since they've been broken up. So yeah. Well, good for her. Yeah. Uh, here we are. So which political writer and director's work includes TV nation and the awful truth? Sharon? Go, Sharon. Michael Moore? Yes! Bravo. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah. How did we, how did we know this? We are smart. Okay. Wow. <laughs> we know things. And by we, I mean me. <laughs> He's saying it with not even humble confidence, just full out confidence. Full on brag. Humble brag. Oh, not even a humble brag. Yeah. Full on just braggadocia. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Good job, Sharon. Adam, Thanks. Any clue? No idea at all. They didn't teach you that chapter in school? No, nope, <laughs> okay. Michael Moore chapter. There we are. Um, oh, I think this is a, I like this next question. So we're into the sport category. Here we are. Cool. Um, in which year did Pete Sampras win his first title at the U.S. Open? Sharon? And Yes. And before you say it, when we actually get the answer, it's bananas this year. Go ahead. 1991. No, Adam. I was going to go for 1992. No, 1990. Oh, wow. Do you believe it was 32 years ago that Pete's, all I picture, remember he had the curly hair? Yeah. I think his forehead continued to get bigger as he got older. Possibly. I'd actually like to see a picture of how he looks today. I feel like there's baldness. Is, that, is there baldness? I feel That's like. That's what I mean about the forehead getting bigger, Kel. Yeah. Um, there's so a remember, little bit of baldness going on. He was intense. Remember how intense he was? Yes. He was super intense. And it wasn't uh because the, the great battle was between him and Agassi, right? I think it was yep. those two. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those two played at the same time. I appreciated when Andre Agassi finally cut the hair. 
Me too, because his oh, yeah. forehead was getting bigger too. It was it was lots of like space and then hair in the back. Yeah. Have you read his uh, bi biography? Andre Agassi? Yeah. No, is it good? It's amazing. Okay. I, did, I didn't read it, but Deb read it. And when Deb reads a book, there's more times than not, I'm going to hear about it. Okay. <laughs> No, so honestly, if you if you if you're looking for a book to read, amazing biography. Was it recent? Uh, Within the last 10, I think. Okay. Yeah, 16, 15, maybe. Okay. My hope is to read at Christmas. I read on vacation. That's good. I yeah. miss reading. I really I had I had that thought today as I was in the tractor. I'm like, maybe one day I can yeah. read. <laughs> I got a stack of books that I gotta tackle, but I've got two weeks off this summer, so. Uh, there will be some time. My uh, my better half uh, may have a work conference in Las Vegas in the <gasps> new year, and I've never been to Vegas. You and gotta so, go. So uh, I'm I'm excited to if it works out, like to potentially go, and then because um, she'll be in conferences all day, and I really just I think I'll do more looking around this time than I did the last time we went together because we were in Florida, and. I'd already been to Florida a bunch of times and like, and I literally, I can't even tell you the hotel we were at in Florida, not joking. If you didn't have a car, you were screwed oh, because, no. because you lit, it was like this little Island of like, um, like we were just, in the, it, it's funny. We were not far from anything, but we were far if you were walking oh, and wow. I swear to God, all they had was across the road was like a seven 11 and like, maybe I think there were, yeah, there was like a, 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 um, a Japanese restaurant <laughs> and then whatever was in the hotel. And then that was it. Man. And then, so I remember I knew that there was a outlets that I'd gone to with my mother on my last trip to Florida. And I was like, okay, I'll go. It took me an hour <laughs> to walk to the outlets <gasps> in Florida heat. I was oh dying gosh. by the time I got there. Dying. Where, in, where in Florida were you? It, uh, not too, like uh, just on the outskirts of Orlando. Ooh, and if yeah. I outskirts, like I probably was on the inskirts of Orlando, but because I was walking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Orlando, I think is pretty sparse that way. You need a yeah. car. Yeah. But it was so crazy because I couldn't believe like how far I was from everything. And we didn't rent a car because we were only going to be there for three days and she was going to be mainly in business stuff. So I, so I literally just, I read like three books by the pool and that was fine. Yeah. But I think if, if we go to Vegas, I'll venture out. But I, I, I have no problem sitting there for five hours reading a book. Like I'm good. Vegas is very walkable, though there are spots where you would need to maybe grab a cab or an Uber or something and, and get to like old Vegas. So you can see that setup, which is pretty cool. Okay. Uh, but it's designed to have people on foot. There's so much, um, well, drinking and like <laughs> people are there not just to have a calm vacation. You know, they're going right. to Vegas yeah. to have fun and so you can walk around on the sidewalks with your cocktail. And I just want to see all the all night buffets, how, oh, how, how many there are. <laughs> I am so hungry. Stop talking about food, please. Oh. Well, why don't we talk about uh, wedding jitters? Because that, that won't soothe your appetite at all, but because uh, then you got to think of the cake and the spread. But anyways, um, <laughs> the wedding jitters that went to the groom when it came to Bobby Brown on his wedding day to Whitney Houston. Okay, this is part, another little highlight of uh, the documentary his documentary was it a and e that that's on yeah and funny enough so it's airing the second part is tonight right and i forgot to tape night one but uh -oh. thankfully a and e when they're on to something they run it 19 million times yeah. <laughs> they're good that so, way so i've already been able to like set the the so funny enough it starts at eight o'clock our time tonight uh but at seven o'clock they're rerunning last night's first part oh okay yeah well, cool the story is that uh back on wedding day 20 years ago he locked himself in the bathroom, questioning whether or not he was good enough and what better resources to help determine those insecurities than good old booze and drugs. Mm. Oh man. Yeah, he was doing a lot of that. He says he was in there drinking, smoking, sniffing, uh, being his stubborn little self. But then it was the, uh, I don't remember if she was the wife or the girlfriend of his buddy at the time, who is now his current wife, who talked him down from his perch but ultimately out of the bathroom uh as part of uh, a long list of stories told in this documentary on a and e crazy bobby brown can you imagine though knowing that you're gonna be marrying whitney houston and like you're gonna hang out in the bathroom because you're scared beyond words <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i think of like uh whitney houston's mother if bobby brown is questioning whether or not he was good enough i see 
Sissy Houston going, you were not yeah. <laughs> good enough, <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, you don't play. You do not play. You do not play with Dionne Warwick. Oh mm-hmm. man. No kidding. That's Can awesome to watch. They're all sitting there in the front row like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Eyebrows up. Eyebrows, arms crossed, mm-hmm. disapproving looks going on. Oh yeah. It's classic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now for a guy that obviously needed, uh, a little bit of help in the finance department, Justin Timberlake, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't carry on with this straight face. Um, well, he's sold out really, but like in the best possible and most literal way, he sold his catalog of music for, I'll give you the drum roll. You give the amount of money. Valued at around $100 million. Wow. $100 million. Here's a thought though, Sharon, tell me if you're, if you think I'm, I actually think it's a bit low for him. Uh, probably because didn't like Dylan or whatever, like, didn't they get like 300 million? Some of these, yeah, but when was that? Like in the last three or four years, not yeah. even two years. Like it's been the last two years at all these Bob Dylan about- did it. Bruce Springsteen did it. Neil Young did it. Stevie Nicks. But I mean, these guys have 50 years of music. That's the only reason that I can reconcile with it because Justin, I was reading the stats has, so it's 200 songs that are, is up for grabs in this deal that he either wrote or co-wrote like sexy back. Can't stop the feeling obviously suit and ties in there. Like just the list goes on. Right. Yeah. So that's, and then he's had like 40 singles that have been released. So I actually think the number's low, even though he is obviously probably 30 years younger than a Bob Dylan or whatever. For sure. But you know, what's interesting is I recently listened to a podcast with, uh, that the guest was Ryan Tedder, the lead singer of one Republic. And obviously Mm -hmm. who is written for everybody, Adele, Beyonce, like the list goes on and probably Justin Timberlake too. Um, he has sold his as well. And there's, so there's a list of younger ones that have done it now. So he's doing it. Um, uh, Bruno Mars has already done it. Shakira has already done it. And it was interesting because at first I'm like, why would you part with this? So like, Soon. early on right but yeah. i love Are ryan losing money? yeah well it's a lot of money but ryan actually said he's viewing it as now like he's starting over which i thought was like that's incentive right like he wants to keep killing it so you know he's going to get his chunk of change from whatever because i'm also certain he's got a bo- bucket load of money because of all the songs he's written for other people oh, so that's yeah. one republic but he's like viewing it as like okay no like i'm starting from scratch i gotta hustle I think that's a great attitude. Imagine though, he's got a hustle. He's got millions and millions and millions of dollars, but he's got a hustle. He's just committed to his craft. Got to appreciate yep. that. Yep. Um, what I, I loved one of the lines that the company that he sold the, uh, the music to said, this is the beginning of what we believe will be an incredible relationship important to us all. <laughs> no kidding. Well, they're going to make a good job because that's the other thing though, is that now they'll be able to decide, oh, that song can go with a, uh, Nissan commercial or whatever it is. Like, like that's the only part where I don't, I wonder if Justin has in his contract that there's certain things he will not let them do. If that was part of the deal, I don't know, but they have the rights now. So maybe not, maybe they can do what they want. I think that's a whole idea of buying the rights is that you're, you're relinquishing your, your say, you know? Yeah. But it's funny for like Justin who doesn't want to do a Vegas residency. Remember like a few years ago, he said, Mm -hmm. that's where artists go to die you know, and until I can't wait till that comes back to bite him in the bum. Cause it's gonna, because everybody's there. (laughs) Jennifer Lopez is there. Britney's there. Like Janet's done it. Like everybody has gone to do it. Bruno, Bruno is there right now with Anderson. Like, like cool people are there now. So, and you know what? Cool people have been there, uh, for a long time. The concept of this, like make sense move of I'll set up my impressive show in one spot and you all come and see it mm-hmm. versus I'll pack up, you know, 10 trucks, 10, 18 wheeler trucks and hundreds of people and pay for all of that. And we'll come and find you like the money balance, the money in out balance totally favors a Vegas residency. It just makes more sense. Mm-hmm. And it makes sense for the city too, because you have great shows in a city like that. Not that Vegas needs a lot of draw. It's a super fun place to be, but when there are fun shows, you're like, yeah, I'll go there. That sounds fun. It makes total sense. Mm. People aren't going there to die. No, but, that's, not but on that's purpose. for sure going to bite him in the bum. Like yep. million. Per- and I, and I predict within like less than five years, this will bite him in the bum. Oh yeah. 
especially because well, he'll he have got, to because he's just sold all his music. <laughs> yeah. And, and especially because he has two little kids, right? Yeah. So I don't know, like, how much longer is he going to want to like maybe when he's 60 or whatever, he'll want to go back out again or 55 or whatever it is. But maybe for the next 10 years, he might not want to be on tour because they're little. So if he can keep mm-hmm. them in one place or keep he keeps them in L.A. and he only has to fly into Vegas for a bit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I think yeah. it's going to bite him. Well, that's why also you sell a big chunk of your catalog for a hundred million bucks. You buy yourself some time. Yeah. The time, that, the time that you want to either A, spend with your kids and your family or B, you know, planning your big return. A la Vegas. <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, uh, biting someone in the behind uh, and big returns, let's talk about Jennifer Lopez. Yeah. Oh, snap snap uh-huh junk in the trunk of course come on she's proud of it she works hard to make it as she's perfect as it is stunning and JLo's new documentary on netflix is called halftime goes back to that awesome super bowl halftime show with her and shakira yep um and is described as being structured around the creation of uh, jennifer lopez's super bowl performance with shakira but the preview for the movie shows uh kind of chronicles not only the physical construction of the set but also the personal framework of the woman behind the scenes so that's you know i think it's not is it her first documentary i think so i watched the trailer Mm -hmm. it's bananas yeah she's she she works man like she's a hard worker nobody can ever say anything about her work ethic she okay. is ridiculous. And like the clips that I saw in this thing, she is pushing her dancers, like really, eh? pushing them to understand. And that's what I love too, is like, she's like the female Tom Cruise or Tom's the female Jennifer Lopez, like the passion that they have to get it right. Yeah. And for it to be amazing. And just all of that and the commitment to their fans to put on the best show possible. Like it's no, she's, she's a rock star. And I think it's interesting that she did feel after the Oscar snub that like, like it hurt her, you know, mm-hmm. she'd worked so hard and like all the other, um, cause this was like 2018, I guess, or 2019 for hustlers. I think yeah. it was just before the pandemic, right? Like that award show season. Yeah. And like, she, uh, you know, got, I think, I believe that there was a golden globe nomination. Like there was a bunch of nominations, but she didn't get the nomination from the Oscar mm-hmm. or for the Oscar. And like, that's when you get kind of suspect you're like, what kind of games are we playing here? Like, exactly. because like Tom Cruise has never won an Oscar. He's been nominated three times, but never won. Like Brad Pitt, same, same deal. I think know? if we're, if we can go back to the Scientology angle for a second, I think that they have such a strong hold on the business with regard to how things are done, that this is the only way the business can then say, you know, no, you don't control everything. Oh, okay. Do you know what I mean? And it just proves that awards show shows are just sort of glad handing uh and another way to sort of promote movies which is great and ultimately it it gives a great spotlight to you know really amazing performances no question it does also happen to miss out on a lot of other really amazing performances but that's that's life but Mm -hmm. i think if we're uh we're looking for a a link there i think that's their way of saying no you don't actually control everything (laughs) maybe yeah well definitely in the tom cruise situation yeah 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 I mean, that's my opinion, but yeah, um, I, I was impressed by the fact that when she talked about that time, JLo talking about not being nominated, she said it was hard, that she had a very low self-esteem, that she really had to figure out who she was and believe in that, not believe anything else. So that's, that's like a personal challenge, right? So uh sh- this documentary is going to get some attention at some film fests but then it'll be coming to netflix on uh, june 14th, 14th. Mm. Yeah, i cannot so- wait mm. yeah it'll be- it's amazing. coming soon love j-lo and, I- and it's interesting too to see someone like jennifer to say that she you know didn't have confidence and because like i said this was only like two or three years ago right she'd already accomplished ridiculous amounts of things you yeah. know and to say that she didn't feel confident after that whole situation, that just shows like she's human. And, yeah, and I yeah. think you'll see that in these clips. And, you know, there's another thing that I'm looking forward to to seeing, because I think a lot of this footage was shot uh, during the prep for Super Bowl, right? Where she was still with Alex Rodriguez. 
So mm-hmm. I don't know if they're able to edit him out, you know, probably not. Like I'm sure he's in, I know that, but I did see a clip Ben Affleck for sure is in this new one. Like he's been interviewed, like he's, you see him being, you know, sat down for a chit chat, but yeah, like Alex would have been in a lot of those, that footage. Cause remember she was going to marry him. Right. So oh, yeah. I'm sure when the discussion was going around for the doc, they're like, oh yeah, like you can film as much of him as you want because they're going to be married. So yeah. Interesting. Um, a few years earlier than the half half bowl <laughs> Super, <laughs> Super Bowl halftime show, J Lo was singing songs uh, featured on her n- debut album, named for the route that she took when she commuted to the studio. Hey, how'd you get here? On the six. One of those songs leads us right into our '90s rewind. Oh, J Lo's "If You Had My Love." signaled her arrival as a singer and soon to be superstar i'm not sure what her acting was at that time j-lo yeah she, she was, was dancer F- first right she was doing yeah actor first actress first yeah actress she, first yeah dancer she first. left she left the janet tour because she got i think her first movie or her first like big role but that's why she didn't finish the 93 janet project okay so dancer first actor next here's my giant album and singing career (laughs) that's what takes us back to 1999 for our 90s rewind whitney houston was already a superstar and slunk right into a groove on heartbreak hotel got some help from faith evans and kelly price on that one too fat boy slim still enjoying airtime with praise you a banger at the clubs kill and adam (laughs) Mm -hmm. that's where Um, sharon was I was at the clubs. It was a banger. Uh, How about Shania Twain? She was winning fans all over the world, but was still tough to get a rise out of, even with a genius rocket scientist and Brad Pitt. That don't impress me much, she said. (laughs) That was one of those songs that solidified her crossover success from country into the mainstream. And shaking his tail feathers. How about Ricky Martin? Shaking that top little behind. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that madonna loves so much oh she did uh he painted the picture of a crazy lady well maybe she wasn't crazy but her lips were devil red and her skin was the color mocha <laughs> and she'll take your clothes off and go dancing in the rain no she'll make you take your clothes off and go dancing in the rain she'll make you live her crazy life but she'll take away your pain like a bullet to your brain come on <laughs> Yeah, I'm talking about Living La Vida Loca. Huge hit for Ricky back in 1999. And that's your 90s rewind. Yeah, you're welcome. (laughs) And a shout out to our good buddy, Tina Landon, who choreographed that. Nice. Magic. Yeah. And also Shake Your Bon Bon, and I believe some others. So great workout those songs are. Oh, very good. Uh, And before you wrap up, Sharon, just a quick um, uh, listener mail update. Yeah. So as we talked about, on the last couple episodes, we have one of your radio listeners who has uh, joined us on the visual podcast fun, uh, Carolyn. Hi, Carolyn. And so she just wrote a really sweet message that I wanted to surprise you with, Sharon. She said uh-huh. that she actually had an, an operation uh, last year, and it was a difficult journey to get through all of that. And she said uh, it was a, you know, a very challenging time. And I have to be honest, Sharon was a huge part uh, of getting through it with her winning personality and positivity. Ah, so I thought you should hear that, Sharon. Well, I appreciate that very much. I've had uh, the great opportunity to have conversations with Carolyn, um, and and she's pointing to a time when we were, you know, elbows deep in uh, COVID stuff, and and I think we we were fortunate enough to be told by our listeners that uh, that we were making connections as we always try to do when we're broadcasting, you sort of imagine that people are listening and you hope that they are. Um, but we were reminded that, you know, there was a real human element, not only to the people listening, but that I think it sort of changed our own perspective on how we delivered. So it's uh, it's an honor to hear that. Thank you very much. Good job, Sharon. Thanks, Kel. Bravo. Thanks you guys. Yeah. How about, uh, how about we thank everybody for listening and for watching? And I apologize for my hair. I can see what it looks like now. I just didn't have time to make it <laughs> hide behind the microphone. I think you're having a great day. Yeah. Thanks, you guys. <laughs> Don't you worry. <laughs> uh, we appreciate you guys very much. Truly, honestly, finding us wherever it is that you do that and then uh, passing it on to your friends and neighbors. Hey, check out this fun show called 90s Now. 
still happening.